Hi, Safe Jerseyans. This is your blogger in chief, Matt Rooney, with yet another Election 2013 audio interview. We've done well over 100 of them at this point at every end of the turnpike in the Parkway. I'm here today, just a few days from when New Jerseyans head to the polls, to speak to a candidate who's really working hard and has enough energy. Uh, to carry an entire county across the finish line, let alone a legislative district. He's up in the 27th, which regular readers will know is represented by career politician Dick Cody. And a lot of people think that if there is an upset on election night for the Republican Party, it might very well come from LD27. So we're very happy to speak to Lee Holtzman today. Lee, thanks so much for talking to Save Jersey. Right. Um, it's got its own lingo. Uh, right, exactly. Uh, phone calls and reaching out to voters, you know, uh, trying to find out what their specific concerns are, um, along with uh, knocking on doors. And I can't tell you, I've probably gone through literally two, maybe three pairs of shoes. Um, I have lost like four or five pounds, <laughs> so that's, you know, that's the truth. That's and, a plus. And, on the 
community, it really resonates with that. It resonates with people, it resonates with businesses, um, and, and I'm very excited to have the opportunity to potentially make some real and significant change. What, what we all, you know, what we all have to recognize, myself, everybody, elections have consequences. You know, when, when, when people complain about, I don't like this policy, why are they doing this, why are they doing that? Well, if you didn't vote, then, you know, that's on you. That's your fault. We can, here, in this district, you know, just a few days, make a significant change. Recently, my, my, uh, my, my opponent said, um, and it's not an exact quote, it's, it's, uh, you know, it's not verbatim, but I believe he said it for the Star Ledger. He said, New Jersey doesn't have a spending problem. New Jersey has a revenue problem. What does that mean? That means it's okay to continue to spend and spend and spend, but you don't have enough money. So we're going to get it from the taxpayers. We're going to get it from the individuals. We're going to get it from the small businesses. We're going to get it from the large corporations. That's a sin. That's not right. Oh, sure. And and I I hope that people realize it when you go door to door, and I suspect they do. Um, if you and I ran our respective households like Dick Cody and Barbara Buono and John Corzine before them run Trenton, we'd be out in the street. Most people don't have unlimited credit. Only the federal government has unlimited credit to an extent. Um, we'd go under pretty quickly. And I think that started to resonate. So, you know, one of the questions that I have for you, Lee, and it's something that I know the people listening to this definitely want to know. We mentioned how you're out there walking today and you're soaked, um, which is which which goes along with the uh, with, with the uh, with the job description when you're running for office. But we're all waiting to see whether or not there's this deluge next Tuesday, whether or not there's going to be a wave, which is how it's usually conceptualized, that's going to not only carry Chris Christie across the finish line and grant fashion, but also yeah. move districts like yours. Your district is still democratic to an extent, but much less democratic than it used to. But Chris Christie's got to win districts like yours if he's truly going to have a landslide. Are you feeling it? Are you not just wet today? Are you also feeling that the precipitation may be coming next Tuesday in LD27? Yeah, the, an- the answer is yes, but. And the but is under no circumstances are we sitting on our laurels waiting for the wave. When the wave comes, fantastic. But at the end of the day, we are, all three of us, my assembly candidate, uh, uh, Laura Ali and uh, Angela Tedesco also, the three of us are working tirelessly. I have an eight-year-old daughter and a four-year-old daughter. And uh, looking forward to Halloween today just so they can see me for a few hours. I haven't seen them in a very long time because we're working so darn hard. So do I think it's going to happen? Yeah. And I think especially in Morris County, and it's just county too, because we are now working with the RNC, who has been fantastic. They have been fantastic, both in Essex and in Morris also. And in Morris, I think there's going to be such a wave of, and I hope, that people, and this is the one danger, is complacency, right? So if, if everybody says, well, the governor's going to win by 20, 25, maybe even 30 points, I don't have to vote. Well, if everybody says that, then we got a problem. Then everybody's got a problem, including the governor, which is why he says, and most of his stops, look, the election isn't over. The election doesn't happen until November 5th. Everybody has to vote on November 5th. If that happens, and it should, there will be a tremendous weight, which will just add to uh, our election day weight. Um, so the answer to your question is yes, but, and the but is, we're not sitting around waiting for it. We're working like crazy to make sure uh, that, that we win. And by we, and I say this uh, when I talk to large groups of people, individuals, whatever, and I mean it. When I say we win, I don't just mean those running for office. Because politics shouldn't just be, or shouldn't really be about the politician, the, the person running for office. I've never held an elected office before. It shouldn't be about, just about that person. It should be about the entire community. Everybody. When we win collectively on November 5th, it will be because, it will be because of all this hard work. I hope that answers uh, uh, your question. Uh- 
Oh, no doubt about it. I mean, I told people at the beginning of the interview, you're one of the most high-energy candidates running this year, and you're proving it. And it's part of the reason why you're putting yourself in a position to win, um, if, if, that, if that wave does indeed come. You're a unique ticket for a bunch of other reasons, too. Your, your assembly running mates, Angelo Tedesco, he's a firefighter. Um, Laura Ali, she's a former Chatham Township councilwoman. Uh, your job, though, I think is, is particularly interesting in the context of a New Jersey legislative race because every year, no matter where you are in New Jersey, candidates on both sides run promising to lower your property taxes. It rarely happens, and they say that they are property tax fighters, champions. They, they try to find as many synonyms as they possibly can to put on those mailers and those commercials. You are actually someone who, without ever holding public office, you're not a career politician, has actually fought and successfully lowered property taxes because you're a property tax attorney. One of the only types of attorneys, I might add, because I'm a lawyer too, you know, that, that people actually like. So, <laughs> why, why, so, so why, don't you, why don't you tell us a little bit about what you do since it's so unique in our profession in that respect? Sure. That, you know what? I appreciate that. And I'm actually going to tell my wife that that's very funny. So, I represent uh, property owners exclusively of all different types of property, whether it be single-family residential properties, uh, owners of, uh, you know, strip malls, uh, tenants who are tenants in those strip malls if their lease allows them to uh, buy, give them the right to file an appeal, uh, as well as very large corporations. And again, what, what I find to be the most common Uh, 
grandiose? Probably not. But I guess at the time, and I was not involved in that process at all. I've never held a white belt. But, you know, the theory was, well, you know, we'll bond for it. It'll get paid for. That's the wrong philosophy. That's what drives up our uh, property taxes. That's what I hope to be able to start to fix uh, with the governor and, and the support of, of other legislators uh, on November 5th. And, I, and I'll also say, look, it doesn't have to, this issue doesn't have to just be a Republican or a Democrat issue. The governor was able to get bipartisan support on this issue. There's no reason we can't have more of that bipartisan support. I have always said, you know, I'll work with a Republican, a Democrat, an independent committee. The party label is less important than the philosophy, than the theory. And nobody's ever going to agree with, you know, with someone else 100% of the time. It just doesn't happen. It's not human nature. But as, like, the governor said, you know, you have to have a core sense of principles, which I do. You don't compromise those principles, ever. But there are other, you know, there are, there are other ways to go about reducing property taxes, of, you know, revising and, and fixing the, the health care system, the pension system. This is a great state to live in. And I mean that. Otherwise, I would have packed up my family and left. That's and right. Have, and I won't. This is a great state. I actually grew up. Um, I live in Livingston now for the past five and a half, five years or so. But I grew up in Sussex County. Right. My whole childhood, my mom still lives in Vernon Township, up in Sussex County. I grew up where the joke was there are more cows than people, right? I grew up, <laughs> you know, yeah. I grew up real close. I grew up real close to Vernon Valley Great Forks. It's beautiful up there. It is beautiful. Drive, it's beautiful. Drive to the Jersey Shore. It's beautiful. We are a diverse and wonderful state. There is no reason that businesses say, well, we're either leaving New Jersey or we're not coming to New Jersey because your business climate is horrible, horrible. And the governor has been doing a great job to try to change that, but he can't do it on his own. He needs a legislature uh, that is, you know, like-minded in, in, in theory and philosophy to make even greater changes. So I apologize for that long-winded answer, but I hope it answers the question nonetheless. Hey, listen. I have really good feeling about your race, but if it doesn't work out, I think anybody who's listening to that answer would say, we need to put this guy in charge of tourism. <laughs> I hope that's right. I'll do it. Yeah, I'll I mean, I, I'm sure at least half a dozen people who listen to this just decided to unlist their house. But you're re- all joking. <laughs> All joking aside, though, I mean, it really is true. It's it's a great state. I mean, look, I mean, I know that's why I stay involved. It's not always easy. Um, there's challenges, but it, it's a place worth fighting for. And if we're going to stay here, um, yeah. we might as well try to do whatever we can to make sure that it's affordable. Affordable Mo- and affordable for our children also. We don't want to have our children have to move out of the state because they can't afford it. It's not just about now. It's about our future. And that's the truth. It's not political, whatever you want to call it. It's, it's just the truth. We talk about contrast in campaigns. And I really don't think there could be a much clearer contrast than in this LD27 state senate race. You have yourself, who has a non-government background. If anything, you have a job where you could say that in a way that you, you kind of fight with government, you scrap with government, you advocate on behalf of taxpayers when uh, when the government is burdening them. Uh, on the other end of the ledger, you have Dick Cody, former governor, longtime state legislator. Um, he's been in there for approximately 40 years, um, which means that he's been in Trenton uh, about 11 years longer than I've been alive. Which is staggering when you think about it. And at this point, you know, I don't have the tabulation in front of me. We were talking about Barbara Buono voting for a hundred and some odd tax increases in her yeah. 20 years in trend. For Dick Cody, you probably have to at least double or triple it. Yeah, we, we've calculated that, you know, the, the state people have calculated whatever. It's about 170 tax and fee increases. And that's the whole point when they say, we don't have a, a spending problem. We have a revenue problem. That blows my mind. You're going to tax tanning salons, tires. You're going to increase taxes on cigarettes. You know, he, he was one of the first people to sign on to the state income tax. It's always take 
take, take, take. It's enough. Take. It's enough. Stop spending so much. And I'm not saying that, you know, the spending level should be zero. We all understand that the government has certain, you know, responsibilities and what have you. But, man, oh, man, there's so much waste, fraud, and abuse and things that, 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 that we just don't need uh, to be spending on. And I think, uh, you know, it's funny. I always, when I'm talking to large groups of people, I probably have already said this to you, you know, I say he's been in office for 40 years, right? So he, too, has been in office longer than I have been alive. I am 39 years old. And when I tell people that, they laugh. It's funny. I was talking to a West Orange Republican group yesterday. So I tell them this, and there's a laughter. And then a woman in the front table, stop laughing. This is absolutely true. And she looked at me, and she says, well, what do you mean? And I'm like, well, I am not yet 40. He has been in office for 40 years. And she said, how is that possible? Yeah. And I said to her, that, that's the point. <laughs> that, how is that possible? I am a strong believer in permanence. I said yeah. that. You come in, you do your job, you do it well, but politics holding an elected office, the same office, shouldn't be a lifetime career. Because if you do, all you get is stagnation. And that's not right. I, I have no doubt in my mind that a lot of the Save Jerseyans listening to this are as enthused about what you're trying to do as I am. So I whether or not they're in the Essex or Morris County towns or in your district, Lee, how can they get in touch with you between now and Election Day and engage this campaign? Absolutely. I, I appreciate you asking that question. Um, we right now are on a blitz. I will call it a blitz. Friday, starting tomorrow, well, we have people every day, but starting tomorrow, which I think is Friday, right, all the days start to blend together at this point, um, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, uh, our office in Livingston is located on 2 West Northfield Avenue in Livingston. Come there. Um, you know, take some, we have sheets and sheets of sheet, bubble sheets, we call them. Uh, to knock on doors, and we knock on doors, and we drop literature, and we're going to be hitting, God knows, over a thousand, I mean, just a tremendous amount of doors, and come and make phone calls for us, and if anybody is out there, and, you know, they can help by, you know, contributing, and, and you know, making any sort of form of contribution, one dollar, five dollars, ten dollars, up to a million dollars, you know, whatever. Tell us, your web- tell us your website, Lee. Uh, New Jersey District uh, 27.com. Okay, that's um, that's easy. And we'll post that on the website. Fantastic. And you can call, um, I don't recall, we have so many campaign phone numbers at this point. My campaign pan- manager's name is Dan Quinones. Uh, we are listed. Uh, we are at 2 West Northfield Avenue. Uh, please call him. Uh, make, you don't even have to make an appointment. Our door is open. Just come in. Uh, we have, oh, we always have, you know, we're a fun group, so we always have food there, we have TVs because our kids come and sit and watch cartoons or whatever while we're in and out of the office, um, and, and go onto our website and, and contribute if possibly, whether monetarily or by phone calls, uh, or by knocking doors. This is it. This is the last and final push. And people say to me, do you really think you can win? And my answer to them is, I have an eight-year-old daughter who just turned nine a couple of days ago, so a nine-year-old daughter and a daughter who just turned four. I don't see, I have not seen them uh, very much over these past God knows how many months. If I didn't think that this was doable, I wouldn't have sacrificed that time uh, of not seeing my family, because I love that family, my family dear. I would not have sacrificed that time if I did not think, A, that this was winnable, and B, that this is just We've been talking to Lee Holtzman. Again, he is the state Senate candidate for the Republican Party in the 27th Legislative District. I'm going to post the towns that that includes, but just running through it real quick. It's Caldwell, Chatham Township, East Hanover, Essex Fells, Florham Park, Hanover, Harding, Livingston, Maplewood, Madison, Milburn, Roseland, South Orange, and West Orange. Did I leave anything out? I, I don't, I don't I think, think you did. Uh, and that, and, and that was from the top of my head, I'd like to point out. That is impressive. 
That's 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 how pathetically nerdy I am when it comes to New Jersey <laughs> politics. Like, but you know, and, and, and he's also running with Angelo Tedesco. And with Laura Ali, there is Assembly Running Mates. I highly recommend you check out this race. I'm not just saying this, and people that read the website, listen to our interviews, know this. I'm not an idle flatterer. I really think if we're going to get a surprise on election night, it's going to be in 27 and or 36, um, which isn't too far away. Those are districts that I think are going to be surprises, and we're going to see upsets. If Chris Christie, especially if Chris Christie wins by as much as he's projected to at the moment. Our polling average has him about 27 points statewide. So it really is. I, I I love it. I absolutely love it. So Lee, listen. I I know that at this point, hopefully you've dried off. You got to get it back out there and, and knock some doors. But I appreciate you taking a break from the trail to fill Save Jersey in on where you're at. And I really hope that once November six arrives and you are a senator elect, you'll come yeah. back and talk to us, and we'll have a, a good long discussion about property tax reform. You know what? I, I appreciate uh, the time uh, you have actually spent with me today, and it will be my pleasure uh, to uh, come and speak with you on the property tax issue at length and all of the other issues uh, that New Jersey uh, faces. This, again, is a great state. It's a great place to live. And if we all, uh, you know, do our part come election day, 